So ayan, tapos na tayo sa mga multiple choice type questions natin kanina. And so now let's try to solve some problems on the topics ng Chem 34. So let's try this problem. So a parahemobenzoic acid gel was analyzed using mass spec. Propose the structure of the mass, stru mass spectrum fragments that give rise to the following peaks. And we're given a series of peaks, uh, one of which the, the, uh, the molecular ion peak is given as 156. So, uh, before we start, let's look at ano ba yung itsura ng isang para halo acid. So, it would look something like this. And it's para substituted. So, we have a para substituted uh, benzoic acid. And, and tama naman that we, we might have a, ha a halogen since these fragments are off by two so the molecular ion peak has an m plus two peak the following peaks also are just off by two so 139 and 142 have just have a two a two a two point difference uh same as with 111 and with 113 so uh, we can expect that it can either have a chlorine or a bromine and we can identify which is which through the mass spectrum that we're given so if this is the molecular ion peak, this is the peak at 156. And this is the peak uh, M plus 2. <laughs> if we use our imagination, uh, we can visualize or we can see that this peak is around one third or one third the height of the M plus peak, or we have a 3 is to 1 ratio ng peaks nila. And uh, recalling uh, the characteristics na mass spectrum natin with, with uh, either chlorine or bromine. The one that gives off a 3 is to 1 peak height ratio is chlorine. And so we'd expect a chlorine yung, yung uh, halogen natin for this uh, compound. And, and, if we, and if we get the molecular formula or the molecular weight rather ng, ang, ng, ng para chlorobenzoic acid, we get na yung molecular mass is actually just the uh, molecular ion peak. So 156, it corroborates with our molecular ion peak that we got. So uh, now that we know anong halogen ang, ang nasa benzoic acid natin, so let's now try to propose yung fragment. So here, let's just draw. Click yung itsura ng parahalobenzoic acid. And so yung peaks natin, so 156, we have already uh, uh, determined the structure ng compound itself. And since this is the, ion, the molecular ion peak, it would just have the structure of the whole, uh, this is the parent ion. So this is, it is just the compound na positive radical. And yung uh, corresponding M, M plus 2 peak niya would just be the same. So let's just copy it para madali. Copy. So the peak at 158 is just uh, exactly the same structure but with the heavier isotope of chlorine. So since we have two natural, uh, natural occurring isotopes ng chlorine, thir chlorine 35 and chlorine 37, this must have the heavier uh, chlorine 37 isotope. So this is the structure. Uh, we got the structures of 156 and 158. Carbon. Uh, uh, fragment pala. So now let's look at uh, how would uh, the fragments at 139 and 111 look like. So let's try to look at this compound and see any common fragmentation patterns that we see in this compound. So since we have a carbonyl group, a uh, usual fragmentation pattern of carbonyl groups is alpha cleavage. So let's try to cleave uh, one of the one of these bonds. So let's try to cleave uh, the bond connecting OH to the carbonyl group. So if we cleave that bond, we are left with this fragment. And let's try to get uh, to, let's try to so uh, to draw if we retain that fragment. Medyo positive radical. 
So if we get the, and if we try to get the molecular mass nito, this actually corresponds perfectly sa uh, mass to charge ratio natin na 139. So with that, nakuha na natin ang structure ng 139 natin. And same as with kanina, since it's just uh, two carb, uh, it's just a uh, substitution of heavier isotope ng chlorine. So the MZ, uh, the mass to charge ratio, ratio na one for one, is just the same structure with the heavier isotope of, of carbon, of chlorine rather. So now we have gotten uh, also yung 139 to one peaks. So all we have left is uh, yung peaks at 111 and 113. So what other uh, what other bonds can we cleave? So you know, we can also cleave the other side of the of the carbonyl group. This bond connecting the carbonyl group to the benzene ring. So we're left with this fragment, the benzene ring, at uh, the chloro substituted benzene ring. So if we try to draw that fragment. And if we get, uh, if we sum up uh, its molar mass and we try to get the molecular weight of this fragment, this actually corresponds or aligns with yung mass to charge, mass to charge ratio natin na one one one. So with that, nakuha din natin yung structure. Uh, this is a cation. So nakuha na natin ang structure ng ating fragment at one one one. And same as with kanina, the one the one one three p would just be the same the same structure but with the heavier isotope since all all of these fragments contain the chlorine atom so again uh, we have uh, in solving the problem we have proposed the fragments that give rise to these uh, mass to charge ratios so in dealing or in, in with interpreting mass mass spectrum fragments so uh, siguro we should uh, we try to familiarize the common fragmentation patterns ng mga functional groups natin and in this problem since it involves a carbonyl meron tayong carbonyl group yung carboxylic acid natin may carbo may carbonyl group we can try the car uh, the alpha block alpha bond cleavage to look at uh, their common fragments and, and that's for number one for number two, we are uh, tasked to estimate the lambda max of the following compounds using Woodward Pfizer rules. So disclaimer na lang siguro that uh, some of these values may differ from the values na meron sa, sa Chem 34 notes natin. So it, the values may be off a little but we are still following the same procedure. Unang una sa lahat, we should look at ano ba yung parent chromophore natin? Ano ba yung magiging base, base value natin? Satin Woodward Pfizer calculation. So if we look at the structure ng compound na ito, we see na meron tayong isang heteroannular or transoid diene. And this, uh, according to this, uh, to these, uh, to this table of values, the base value for that would be 200, 215. 215 nanometers. So these are all in nanometers. So we have, we already have a base value. And now let's try to look at uh, ano yung mga substituents and other factors that can influence the lambda max of this compound. So let's first look at uh, yung further conjugation. Yeah? So if we look at this at this compound in, as a whole, wala tayong makikitang uh, further conjugation. This double ring is isolated from the double, uh, from this double uh, from this conjugated system since it is uh, more than a bond away. So, hindi siya kasali, hindi siya nakoconnect natin sa conjugation. So, we don't have any further pi conjugation. So, after that, let's try to look at uh, any substitute, any substituents that it may have. And since it's, uh, these are all alkyl groups, so let's count how many alkyl groups this uh, chromophore has. So, it has this alkyl group uh, this is an alkyl group uh, substituent. Uh, so this is an alkyl. And so we actually have four alkyl substituents. 
sa compound natin. So, 4 times uh, each alkyl group draw contributes 5 nanometers. So, we have 6, 6 max 20. 20 nanometers ang contribution ng mga alkyl substituents sa compound natin. So, ayan, uh, we don't have any other hetero atoms. So, wala tayong other substituents. So, let's try. Ano yung last thing na natin if it has any exocytic double bonds? So, uh, if we look at uh, ilang exocytic double bonds meron nito, so it only it has two. So, sa conjugated system ito, this double bond is, called, is an exocytic double bond with respect to this ring. And meanwhile, itong bond is exocyclic with respect to this ring. So, meron tayong dalawang exocyclic bonds. And each exocyclic bond daw contributes 5. So, we have uh, a 10 nanometer contribution from uh, yung exocyclic double bonds. And therefore, yung lambda max natin is just, we're just gonna total yung base value natin plus the effect, uh, plus the contribution of substituents natin. So, lambda the max natin for this compound would be 204, 245 nanometers. So, yun yung pagkuha natin sa uh, lambda max ng, uh, ng isang dying. So, let's try to look at isang conjugated carbonyl compound. So, let's try and get the, uh, the lambda max of this carbon conjugated carbonyl compound using uh, the Woodward Pfizer dose natin. So, again, uh, first step to look at I could do is to look at the uh, conjugated uh, parent chromophore Latin. And in this case, it would be, uh, would, it would have a base, base value of 215. So, uh, nanometers. Yeah. so after uh, identifying your uh, parent chromophore Latin, your base chromophore, Let's look at if we have further pi conjugation. And turn out we have uh, a double bond that extends this conjugation. So our conjugation system now would become a three bond, three double bond, including your carbonyl bond. And therefore, we have one extended conjugation the double bond, which contributes 30 nanometers. Uh, Lambda max, yeah. Now let's look ilang, ilang substituents pa. So for carbon conjugated carbon compounds, my different uh, types of uh, substituents tayo, my alpha, beta, and higher substituents. So for alpha, alpha substituent, if we look at the alpha carbon, this is the alpha carbon, it has one alkyl substituent dito. And the alkyl substituent of the alpha position, uh, it uh, contributes 10 nanometers. We also have one, uh, if you look at the beta, this is the beta carbon, we have one alkyl substituent then. So beta substituent alkyl that uh, corresponds to, one, uh, to 12 nanometers. And lastly, we have, uh, do we, if we have any higher order substituent, it turns out meron tayo, this would be our gamma carbon, and this is our alkyl substituent sa, sa compound. So there is one uh, alkyl substituent con uh, contributing 18 nanometers sa lambda max natin. So we have, uh, we have accounted for yung uh, substituents natin, we have accounted yung double bonds. So last thing to check is yung exocytic bonds natin, kung ilan. And meron tayong tatlo. So this uh, double bond uh, is equivalent to two exocyclic bonds. Since it don't, this double bond is exocyclic to both this ring and to this ring, so meron na tayong two again. And, and lastly, this double uh, bond is exocyclic with respect to this ring. And so we have three exocyclic bonds, so three times 515. And therefore, if we uh, add these all up, this gives us our lambda max value for uh, this compound to be 300 nanometers. So this would be how we calculate your lambda max. How do we predict lambda max 
using new wood for Pfizer goes natin. For number three, this might be a more comprehensive, uh, a more lengthier problem. So let's try to tackle it uh, one at a time. So compound A, given its molecular formula, is a sweet-smelling compound that exhibits four distinct signals in its HNMR spectrum. IR analysis also shows that the compound, that this compound has strong peaks at 1740 and 1189 wave number. Wave numbers. It reacts with ethyl magnesium bromide forming compound B. And com uh, the molecular formula of compound B is also given, which has a, which has three HNMR peaks. Propose a structure for compound A. So uh, when dealing with problems like this, I always start. I usually typically start sa index ng hydrogen deficiency or yung degree of unsaturation. So this gives us an idea kung meron tayong double bond, kung meron tayong triple bond, or meron pa tayong ring sa compound natin. So the formula for the degree of unsaturation is given by 2C uh, plus 2 uh, plus if, if nitrogen, if uh, my nitrogen tayo, uh, subtract all the hydrogens and minus all the halogens, meron tayong uh, halogen and all over 2. So this would be the uh, the formula that you will be using. So if we get the du of letter A, of compound A rather, we get a du of, so uh, quick solving lang, this would give us a du of 1. So a du of 1 uh, either means we have one double bond or a ring sa structure niya. And to know which is which, uh, which, of, the, uh, which of the either we have, we will go to our other uh, data given sa problem ito. So it says sa IR analysis, it shows uh, strong peaks sa 1740 wave number. And, and as we recall, yung strong peaks uh, at around 1700 uh, can be assigned to yung carbonyl stretch, yung CW bond all stretch natin. This is a very indicative uh, IR signal. So, meron tayong carbonyl group. And yung DU natin, yung double bond, uh, one degree of saturation is that double bond sa carbonyl natin. And also, it has a strong peak at 1189. So, although yung uh, 1189 is now at the fingerprint region, uh, this is uh, naiiba ito since it is a very strong peak, a very distinct peak at the fingerprint region. And this is... Uh, uh, according to our, our, IR, our IR tables, this is attributed to yung C single bond O stretch natin. So if we try to connect yung carbonyl stretch to a CO stretch natin, we can form this uh, functional group. We can form an ester. Uh, so tama naman. Uh, we're in the right direction. Uh, if we think of an ester kasi sabi raw ng problem that compound A is a sweet smelling compound. So if we recall, esters are fragrant compounds. So they are usually uh, the, uh, the fruity sweet smelling compounds that we know. So uh, it can be, it is most likely na we have an, uh, we, are, we are working with an ester. So ayun. So now since we have a working uh, since we have the functional group down, so it's now a matter of rearrange of arranging the the carbons and the hydrogens that we satisfy the this uh, data. So it says that it think, uh, compound A exhibits four distinct signals the HNMR spectrum. Yeah. So it has four types of uh, types of carbon. So uh, in this part of uh, in problem solving, we have to exhaust every possible structure. Nang isang ester uh, C5H10O2 na ester. And if we look at it, we only have four structures na merong apat na distinct signals. And we'll be drawing it now. So yun, these are the four structures uh, ng isang C5H10O2 na ester that has four distinct signals sa HNMR spectrum. Yeah, so we got this all from exhausting all the possible structures ng 
C5H10O2. So it may take uh, a big amount of time, but we'll get these four comp these four structures. So to verify, if there are four distinct signals, let's label them quickly. So for the first compound, let's label it compound one. There are there four distinct comp uh, protons here. This metal is has one distinct type of proton. This part, this this methylene group. I have just labeled the different types of protons because of parts of compound number one. So if we label this uh, compound number two and label all the different types of carbon, we also see na meron ding apat na, na, na types of protons meron ito. So these two groups, as we recall kind of now with, uh, with a freely rotating single bond, <clears throat> they will just experience the same environment. So these are just chemically equivalent. So for compound three, if we follow the numbering, this is compound three, and label all the you know, distinct protons that we have. We have four. We also have four distinct carbons, a uh, protons uh, for this structure. And lastly, we also have that for compound four. So one, two, three. So all these uh, compound, all these structures have four distinct, uh, four distinct hydrogens of compound. Yeah. Therefore, how do we differentiate since it all satisfies uh, uh, given information at in uh, compound A? So how do we differentiate between these four possible structures? So we are able to differentiate them using the information given the uh, Grignard reaction. So it says it reacts with ethyl magnesium bromide forming compound B, C7H16O, which has three uh, NMR peaks, H NMR peaks. So if we look at that statement, it is a very, uh, it has a relatively larger molecule. It has seven carbons and 16 hydrogens, yet it only, uh, it only expresses three peaks. So NMR spectrum. So we only have three types of heart hydrogens. So this would be a very um, symmetric. So many protons here would be equivalent to each other. And so that would give us an idea from how would this structure, how would this uh, compound look like? So let's try to do the Grignard reaction with all these four compounds. And if you recall, uh, yung reaction ng esters with the Grignard reagent. So the Grignard reagent adds twice to the ester, which leads to either a secondary or tertiary alcohol. Secondary if this R group is an, a hydrogen or tertiary otherwise. So in this tertiary or secondary alcohol, uh, two of the Substituents here are coming from young Grignard reagent natin. So yeah, let's try to do to do that with our with our four uh, possible structures of compound A. So if we do the Grignard reaction, in, so in excess, so this is excess. So we were reacting it with ethyl bromide, ethyl magnesium bromide, and acid work of lump. We form, we retain the this R group, ng ester, and then we add two ethyl groups, and it becomes a tertiary alcohol. So this would be the structure of the of compound of the Grignard grade of the Grignard product, ng ester ng compound one. So if we do the Grignard reactions of compound two. Uh, this uh, R group is retained. This becomes, uh, the carbonyl becomes an alcohol. And then we attach uh, two equivalents ng R groups that we got from the, uh, from the Grignard reagent, which is an ethyl group. So that would be the structure for the Grignard product uh, when we have this ester. So what would happen if we have this ester? So yung R group natin dito, 
uh, given the same condition. So our group natin dito is just uh, hydrogen. So this would be a secondary alcohol. So yung carbon natin becomes an alcohol. And the two R groups are coming from coming from uh, yung vineyard natin, ethyl. So we have two ethyls dito. So that would be the reaction uh, ng vineyard uh, reagent with this, uh, with this ester. And lastly, we have this ester. Uh, with the same vineyard reaction, we are left, uh, we, uh, we retain this R group, this ethyl group dito. And the carbonyl becomes an alcohol and we attach two other ethyls as well. So again, we have, we have uh, written down the structures ng uh, vineyard uh, products from those possible ketones, uh, possible esters that we had for compound A. So let's look at which of the following is compound B. So compound B daw had a molecular uh, formula of C7H16O and it had three identical uh, protons. So let's look at all these uh, green yard products and see if which of them would uh, satisfy the conditions ng ating compound B. So Siguro the most uh, straightforward uh, thing to look at would be if ilang carbons meron yung nagawa natin alcohol. So for this uh, vineyard product, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We only have 6 carbons dito and thus it's not compound B. So we can exclude this uh, ester structure or for this uh, ester. Uh, for this uh, no, green yard product, rather, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have 8 carbons, which is more than yung hinihingi natin from compound, yung ini-expect natin from compound B. So yung ester, yung second structure ng ester cannot be compound A as well. So with compound, uh, with the third ester structure, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have 5 carbons. Again, does not does not satisfy the conditions ng compound B. So it is not compound B, and therefore it is not compound A. And we are left with the last ester. And if we look and pre verify, it has seven carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It has seven carbons. And also it has uh, due to its uh, high symmetry, it has three identical protons. So if we label up, what, are, what those identical protons are. So this would be one proton, your alcohol proton atin. And these, these groups would be identical. And then these groups. Since there is symmetry in this uh, molecule. So therefore, we have three identical protons. So this would be compound B. This is the structure of our compound B. Therefore, this would be the structure of our compound A. So yeah, we have deduced. So to sum it up, we have, we have deduced the structure of our compound A with uh, using all the all the data given the problem. Nito. So it's a very uh, comprehensive problem. It tackles many uh, topics, so uh, I, we have we just have to take it uh, one step at a time and make sure that all the all the data corroborates with each other. So yeah. And so for number four, uh, the problem is uh, the structure of the neutral compound C C four H seven and O was characterized using carbon in a more previous IR analysis showed that it had sh sharp peaks at 3386, 3196, and 1663 uh, inverse, wave, uh, inverse centimeters. Below also shows the carbon NMR spectra and the depth experimental results of the compound. We have we are tasked to deduce its structure. So with problems like this, uh, you often start with the DU. So yung DU ulit is 2C plus 2 plus N. Minus all the H, minus all the X over 2. So if we solve yung DU natin for compound C, 
the du for this compound would be 2. This could mean two double bonds. It could mean two rings. It could mean a, a mixture of both. Or it can also mean a triple bond. So uh, in order to know what these uh, two degrees of sat unsaturation are, we'll have to go and look with, uh, go to the other supporting details of this problem. So sabi daw ng IR analysis, it showed sharp peaks at, 33, at around 33, 3400 and also 3200. And according to our, our common IR stretches, this would uh, this can be assigned to the asymmetric and symmetric stretches ng ating NH bond. So we would expect that these two peaks would correspond to an NH2 group sa ating compound. Now we don't know if it's an amine or an amide. But we do know that there is uh, two NH bonds sa ating compound. And lastly, another, yung other IR data natin, it showed a, a peak at 1663. So this is very close again to yung 1700 natin, yung usual makikita natin ang carbon and CO stretch. So this would be, this wave number would just correspond to one carbonyl. Now, Let's we have to we have to uh, think about if it is a, a a ketone and an amine or an amide. If we if we merge these two groups together, we get an amide. Or if it's a ketone and amine, uh, and we can uh, we can actually know this from the description of our compound. So that so the compound uh, was neutral. If it if it had an amine, the amine is a basic uh, functional group. So the compound would be uh, more basic, but since it describes itself as neutral, amides, amide is a neutral uh, functional group, then most, most probably that we have an amide in our structure. Ayan, so uh, going back then sa DU natin, we have one degree of saturation is now allocated sa ating double bond sa carbonyl. So we only have one double bond or one ring left, one degree of saturation to look to look for. And we can look at that through yung uh, carbon uh, data, na, yung carbon spectra natin, and also from the death experimental results. So let's go through DET90. So according to DET90, this would give a positive peak. If we have a methane group, or yung single CH natin na group. And as it looks out, at uh, nakikita natin na wala palang methane group sa carbon na, sa structure na ito. So we do not find a, a, a lone CH group dito. Therefore, we're, uh, let's look at depth 135. So depth 135 would, would produce a positive peak if it's methyl or methane. And the negative peak pag methylene. So when we compare these uh, these four carbons, yung first two carbons, yung first uh, yung uh, yung two very deshielded uh, carbons are not uh, do not give a signal. So that one three five, therefore they are quaternary carbons. Or they do not have a proton attached to their carbons. Uh, the one at 120 ppm uh, exhibits a negative signal, so it must be a methylene group. But the positive one, uh, can, uh, the positive signal at that 135, yung 16 ppm, can either be a methyl or a methane. Pero since wala dong methane, sabi ng 90 So therefore, we are sure na yung, yung pinaka upfield na carbon would be a methyl carbon. So now it's... Uh, it's a game of arranging these fragments to show yung full, yung full structure ng ating compound. So ayun, let's do that here. I reproduce ko lang yung nasulat natin kanina. Then we have an amide group dito. So 
Uh, next thing we do is let's let's look at uh, what data can we get from the uh, carbon shifts ng CNMR. So the first uh, pinaka shielded carbon, yung 170 ppm natin, according to yung carbon NMR charts natin. This is usually uh, attributed to yung carbonyl carbons natin, and it turns out meron tayong carbonyl carbon in the carbon ng amide. Therefore, uh, yung 171 ppm would be the carbon ng carbonyl group. So we have that assigned. Now let's look at uh, very closely related uh, peaks, yung 140 to 120. They are roughly around the same value. And it according to yung rule of thumb that in kanina, when it comes to alkenes, right, when it comes to carbon shifts in general, we have the 100 ppm rule. So beyond 100 ppm, they are most likely to be sp2 carbons. So yung 120 and 139 natin are sp2 carbons. So they constitute a double bond. But sabi raw, yung isang carbon is a quaternary carbon. So it's so there is substitution at both ends. Meanwhile, yung isa is a methane group, a methylene group rather. So yung dalawang ends niya are just CH. Uh, CH bonds. And therefore, we have this this fragment ulit. We have we don't know the sub the substituents dito pa. Pero this would be this would be our carbon na quaternary and sp2. So this would be one three nine ppm. And yung other carbon, yung other alkenyl carbon would be or 120 ppm, which is a methylene group. And lastly, we have a methyl group. It's very upfield. Uh, and that we expect since uh, sp3 carbons are relatively more upfield talaga. So it's just a methyl group. And di natin alam yung attachment. So after uh, finding the fragments, so we just have to attach this uh, accordingly. So it's like a game. So attach, attach lang natin yung fragments to, to show the full structure ng ating compound. So if we connect directly yung, car, yung methyl to the amide group, close na yung compound, hindi na natin nasasali yung uh, double bond. So we have to insert the double bond in between sa amide and the, car, and the methyl. And it turns out that is the only possible structure na nakukuha natin from these three fragments. Yeah, so that would be the structure ng ating compound. To check, to check sa ano natin kanina, this would have, uh, this would have a molecular formula of C4, H, 7 and O. Tama, uh, tama naman uh, when uh, according to the given. And it has two degrees of unsaturation from our calculations kanina, which is uh, from the carbonyl and from the double bond ng alkene. Also, sa IR natin, we, we noted na meron tayong uh, NH stretches, yung asymmetric and symmetric. So we have an NH2 group dito. And also, we have a carbonyl group from that 16, uh, 1600 stretch. So this is our carbonyl group. And lastly, let's try to assign yung carbons ulit. So yung 171 ppm is the most deshielded carbonyl carbon. And then yung 140, yung 139 ppm would be this carbon. Yung substituted na sp2 carbon. Yung 120 ppm here would be yung methylene ano natin yung CH2 uh, na sp2 carbon natin and lastly yung pinaka upfield would be our sp3 methyl dito so all these uh, all these data uh, corroborate sa naging structure natin sa number 4 so that this would be the structure of compound C there so we're down to the last problem ng ating Chem 34 uh, first LE review. And this seems to be the culmination ng ating uh, various spectroscopic techniques. Uh, since we are dealing with 
uh, almost all, wala tayong UV vis pala dito. So we're dealing with many uh, spectroscopic techniques and we're using them all to elucidate a structure of an unknown compound. So let's do that with this problem. So in number five, we are to elucidate the structure of the compound given yung, uh, given data from yung mass spec, yung IR, tsaka yung proton, carbon, uh, proton and carbon NMR. Uh, and reviewing, uh, if, and if you look at yung given information natin, wala tayong molecular formula. So, paano natin, nat, paano natin makukuha, paano natin malalaman yung molecular formula niya since, uh, since we're not given uh, explicitly kung ano yung uh, molecular formula. And it turns out, we can, since we're given the molecular weight, through the molecular ion P. So, there is a possible, uh, there is a possible, uh, a useful way for us to determine uh, the working chemical formula or the possible chemical formulas ng uh, compound na ito given yung, molecular for, uh, given yung molecular weight and it is through the rule of 13. So the rule of 13 is a very useful tool in spectroscopy or in structure elucidation. So when we divide the molecular weight of the, of the unknown compound by 13, it would give us a whole number and a remainder over 13. So these two values would prove important kung paano natin ibibuild yung base formula natin. So the rule of 13 gives us a base formula consisting of carbons and hydrogens. And the base formula would look something like this. So from uh, the, the molecular weight of the compound, we get a base formula na CN, HN plus R. And we can adjust this uh, accordingly pag meron tayong malalaman more about the compound uh, with the other data. So let's try the rule of 13 uh, given yung molecular weight natin, which is 136. So 136 over 13 would give us a whole number value of 10 and then a remainder of 6 over 13. So that we can have an idea na yung base, ay yung working chemical formula natin would be, would be C10, H16. And we can adjust this, uh, this working formula accordingly pag meron tayong makuhang heteroatoms. Mamaya, as we know more about the compound. So, erase lang natin yung rule of 13 and set aside yung formula natin. So let's look at yung mass spec nat ay yung IR muna natin. So uh, looking at the data from the IR, it says it has a strong a strong and broad peak at 3055 wave numbers and it has a strong peak again at 1698 uh, wave numbers. So if we if we look at both these uh both these information and look at yung usual IR stretches natin, we find that this is actually uh, this actually corresponds to the stretches uh, that we see say some carboxylic acid uh, functional group so the carboxylic acid is very hard to miss so ir spectrum it's very characteristic kasi it's a very strong and broad peak broad kasi it starts at maybe 35 and it goes down to 300 to 3000 or maybe even further up and it's very and it's very strong, so it's a very big, uh, big, big peak sa higher wave numbers natin sa IR spectrum. And tama naman tayo to assume that it's a carboxylic group due to the uh, carbonyl zero one O stretch at 1698 inverse wave numbers. So we have an idea na meron siyang carboxylic acid. And also from the IR data, it says my overtones daw tayo. So it gives us an idea aromatic yung compound natin. So since aromatic yung compound natin, let's try, let's assume muna na this aromaticity comes from a benzene ring. Ayun. So we have two functional groups uh, identified. We have a carboxylic group and a benzene ring. So let's uh, adjust yung, since we're adding, since we now have added two oxygen atoms sa formula natin, 
we have to adjust our uh, chemical formula accordingly para it would stay sa 136 uh, na molecular weight natin. So the atomic uh, weight of oxygen, the atomic mass of oxygen is 16. So this would be equal, equivalent to a CH4, which is also equal to 16. So kada, every time we add an oxygen, we subtract a, a CH4 equivalent sa ating working general equation, a general formula. So, so since we added two, uh, two oxygens dito, we have to subtract uh, two carbons. So this becomes C8. And we had to subtract eight hydrogen. So this would be CH8. And yung dalawang oxygens natin. So C8, H8, O2. And from the IR data, wala naman tayong ibang other heteroatom. So let's try to get the DU or the degree of unsaturation ng uh, chemical formula that we have. So the DU of this would be two times eight plus two minus eight over two. And we get a DU of five. So it's a very, uh, it's a highly unsaturated molecule. And let's account kung saan ba nang gagaling yung degrees of unsaturation niya. So the carbonyl group, we, uh, we can assign one degree of unsaturation due to the double bond sa carbonyl, uh, carbonyl carbon. Therefore, we ha have accounted one uh, degree of unsaturation. So if dating na natin yung benzene ring, this actually has four degrees of unsaturation since it has three double bonds, one, two, three, tsaka it's a ring itself. So if we add them all up, so one degree of unsaturation dito, and one from the benzene ring. We have five unsaturations in total. So we were able to account for the unsaturations na nasasolve, nasolve natin sa DU. And so this gives us a better understanding sa ating compound. And uh, to check, check na lang natin uh, if we're still following yung molecular formula natin. This uh, fragment has uh, one carbon Tsaka yung dalawang oxygen nandito, then one hydrogen. Well, this, uh, this benzene ring has six carbons has and also has five hydrogen. So kulang tayo, we are lacking ng one, uh, isang carbon, tsaka dalawang hydrogen. So paano kaya ito nakaka-connect sa compound natin? So let's look at yung carbon and proton and mark to check uh, kung ano yung connectivity ng uh, C ay yung isang C at saka dalawang H dito and also to check if tama ba yung uh, inassume natin na functional groups so if we look at yung uh, carbon NMR ay yung proton NMR muna it says it exhibits a peak at a very shielded peak at 12.35 it is a singlet and it contains one hydrogen so we can assign this if from our usual uh, H NMR peaks this is our carboxylic H carbon since uh, it's very deshielded. It's, it is the, it's the proton ng ating carboxylic group and isa lang yung integration niya. So we would expect na this, this we have accounted na this uh, peak corresponds to yung uh, carboxylic proton natin. And next, we have a, we have a peak at 7.29. So if you recall, yung 7.29 uh, corresponds to yung aromatic rings natin, which, uh, which we can confirm since yung signal at 7.29 is a multiplet. We see a multiplet. So we see complex splitting within sa uh, protons. And therefore, this is characteristic sa benzene ring. And also, we have uh, five uh, hydrogen sa integration niya. So this can correspond to the five hydrogens ng, ano, this would co correspond to the five hydrogens ng isang benzene ring. So tama, we have assigned uh, this peak, 7.29, to the hydrogens ng benzene ring sa compound na yan. And so lastly, we are left with uh, uh, the most upfield signal dito, uh, 3.59. 
it is a singlet daw. So this means wala daw siyang protons na katabi. And also, it has two carbon, two hydrogens integration niya, which is exactly what we have not accounted yet. So this, uh, so this, it would mean that uh, these uh, hydrogens are equivalent. It, they, uh, they are just one type of proton, and they are situated in such a way na wala silang neighbors, wala silang proton na neighbors. So paano natin yan i assign? So let's also check yung carbon NMR para uh, we can be more guided kung paano natin i-coconnect yung, yung C at saka dalawang H. So it says that the carbon NMR has a, has a stretch, has a peak rather, at 173 ppm. We can assign this sa ating C. We can assign this sa ating C, a carbonyl, carbonyl carbon sa ating carboxylic group. So it's we, uh, if we recall, yung carboxylic, uh, yung carbonyl uh, carbon is very, is very shielded due to the sp2 character and yung connection niya to the electronegative oxygen therefore we can assign yung 170 ppm sa ating carbonyl carbon and next we have a series of very similar values from 135 to 127 uh, if we recall yung uh, rule of thumb natin when it comes to cnmr so above 100 ppm these are sp2 carbons so all these all these signals are sp2 and since they're very closely related they must be uh, a part of the same uh, functional group and it turns out they are part or they can be assigned to the benzene ring so if we look at the structure of the benzene ring na substituted here we see now we can draw a line of symmetry down to the center this way. So therefore, other either sides of the uh, benzene ring would be chemically equivalent. So if we were to assign the, the chemical shifts of the benzene ring, the, the substituted carbon would be the most deshielded. So this would be the you know, 135.50 ppm natin. Since these two carbons are just chemically equivalent, let's assign this na lang. This would be our 129.85 ppm. This would be our 128.71 ppm. And lastly, this would be uh, the most upfield since malayo, um, medyo malayo na siya sa uh, substituent. This would be yung 127.05 ppm natin. So this uh this confirms or this gives us more assurance that we have benzene ring. So let's redraw. Let's redraw the benzene ring. And lastly, we have this uh relatively or the most upfield peak dito sa CNMR, which is the uh, forty one point eighteen. Uh, according to our rule of thumb, this must be an sp3 carbon. And since uh, if we look at yung proton and carbon and MR natin, these two peaks are both upfield. So they must, we have, uh, we can have an idea that these are connected since these are both upfield uh, up signals. So if we attach the carbon and make it a methylene group, And di natin alam yung substituents on either side. Then we are left with a methylene group dito here. So we have three. Uh, we have three possible fragments. So it's a matter of connecting all these three fragments para to form our compound. And it turns out, meron isa lang. Uh, you, you can only attach this one way, kasi. If we attach natin to this would close, hindi natin masasali yung CH2 group natin. So, yung final natin, yung final natin na compound, given the data, would be, this would be the benzene ring. Meron pa siyang CH2 dito bago, bago yung carboxylic acid. So, this would be 
So from uh, the data from yung IR tsaka yung proton and carbon NMR, we were able to get this structure for yung compound natin. So how do we verify this compound and uh, this structure for the compound? We're given now the daughter ions of the fragment, uh, the daughter ions of the compound in the mass spec analysis. So let's look at uh, these daughter ions. So the peak at 136 is the molecular ion peak. So this must be the whole structure as a whole. And the structure as a whole. Meron daw tayong peak at 119. So how do we, uh, paano natin to ipapakita na meron tayong uh, mass fragment with a mass to charge ratio na 119? So if we look at this compound and see ulit yung common fragmentation patterns natin sa uh, common functional groups, yung carbonyl group natin here can undergo alpha cleavage. So if we cleave this group, if we cleave yung OH bond, OH group off, we subtract uh, 17 from uh, the molecular formula, uh, uh, the molecular weight 136. And sure enough, we get the molecular, uh, we get the peak now 119 from this fragment. And we were able to uh, we were able to show the peak now 119. How about yung 91? Uh, Let's try to cleave the other bond, ng alpha bond, ng carbonyl group. And we're left with this group. Dito. And if we try to, uh, to solve yung molecular weight ng fragment na ito, it is actually uh, 91. We actually get we actually get a mass to charge ratio 91 when we break off this bond. Therefore, we were also able to show uh, yung 91 peak natin. And lastly, uh, yung 77 we can show that if we cleave this bond and we're left with the aromatic ring. So our aromatic ring would be C6H5, which does have a molecular weight of 77. So we were able to confirm the structure of our unknown compound uh, from the fragmentation pattern na nakikita natin from mass spec. So we can say, in the end, that this is the structure of our unknown compound. This is phenyl acetic acid. So for these types of problems, we have to connect everything, every information that we have from the spectroscopic techniques and piece together a plausible structure for our unknown compound. So that is it for the first long exam review ng Chem 34. Uh, if you have any further questions or if you want to be clarified by anything uh, in this review, you may contact anyone from the ACAD branch uh, to help you with uh, your question. So, so ayun, uh, thank you and uh, good luck on your first long exam, Sakem 34.